Hello, this is Adrian at excelattheoffice.com and in this video I'm going to show you my PowerPoint slide template that I've created for you based on the hit Netflix documentary called Ancient Apocalypse uh, presented by Graham Hancock who's a successful best-selling author, really interesting uh, series uh, so much so that I thought I'd do a PowerPoint slide deck based on it. Um, I've also got an associated uh, blog with this that I'll put in the um, description below a link to it uh, where you can download this template. So if I just uh, show you initially what it looks like and I'll go to presentation mode which is down here on the bottom right of PowerPoint um, we'll get straight to it. So in this uh, presentation I've recreated as the header slide the um, title sequence from Netflix of Ancient Apocalypse using a bespoke uh, Castella font style which you might like and I've overlaid that on a simple circle shape which I filled in as a gradient to get the uh, edges a little bit faded there and then done a kind of freeform uh, curved shape around that to have it reenact the effect of it looking like the earth on fire like it's been hit by some massive meteor or, uh, or similar and then added a glow effect to that and the background image is a, a nice royalty free uh, stock photo um, so uh, that makes for a nice dark background and I don't usually use um, dark layouts to slides because um, it's better for readability and accessibility to have dark text on white backgrounds but um, in this case I've made an exception just uh, because it seemed apt for the design of Ancient Apocalypse. Now as the slide transition you'll notice I've got the uh, got a fly through slide transition which I've slowed down a bit which gives you that kind of nice feel like you're flying through uh, space uh, and then the first uh, main content slide I've done this uh, kind of I've inserted a comet icon in the top left and a pyramid icon in the bottom right which is behind the page uh, the slide number overlaid onto it and I've also just added a simple line with a, a circle end connector um, as to underline the title and again the titles are using the uh, Castella um, font style and when you uh, I've, I've sorted out the animations as well so when you uh, click through uh, the bullet points they come up one by one on this template obviously you can replace this with your own content and titles um, and I was just fascinated reading the uh, reaction in some of the articles if you ever have the um, uh, 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 if you ever see the uh, articles that were online about it, it's quite makes for quite amusing reading, really. So the Guardian, um, which is <laughs> becoming more of a kind of parody news than a news site these days, but it called it the most dangerous show on Netflix and uh, on Wikipedia. There's um, activists there have uh, described it very disparagingly, uh, calling conspiracy theories. Uh, declaring war, white supremacy and other things. Um, there are quite a lot of unhappy people about the series and um, calling for it to be censored and shut down or at least the Society of American Archaeologists took a, the time to write a thousand word open letter to ask uh, Netflix to at least recategorize it to a uh, science fiction rather than documentary but with such critical acclaim, who could possibly resist watching such a show if you hadn't heard about it? Because uh, that makes it intriguing, or as the older Dodge go, there's no such thing as bad press. It's uh, <laughs> it's created it created quite a stir. But if you watch it, you'd be maybe puzzled by why it's attracted such um, uh, cataclysmic descriptions. But anyway. Um, we'll get back to the presentation. Uh, if you're interested in watching it, the gist of it is where uh, Graham Hancock 
goes around the world looking at different archaeological sites and as he does in his uh, all manner of uh, best-selling books which I thoroughly recommend really interesting reads and mind-expanding stuff um, that there's a lot of evidence to suggest that humanity and civilizations are much older than we are otherwise led to believe by uh, what he describes as mainstream uh, archaeology. And the three main tenets which I've done here with um, just simple rounded rectangle shapes and sorted the animations out so they come on one by one of the fact that human civilization is much older than uh, claimed by mainstream archaeology and as he describes everything just seems to be getting older stuff keeps getting older the more things that get found the further back uh, human civilization gets pushed but one big example being uh, Gebekli Tepe which is a really interesting archaeological site multiple times the magnitude of Stonehenge and about uh, six to eight thousand years older also that um, Layers in the ground in the ge geological record suggest that the Ice Age may well have ended in a cataclysmic comet impact um, rather than gradual clim natural climatic changes, which is quite fascinating to think about and makes you want to uh, look to the heavens a little bit more and be aware of the space and asteroid belts around us, which I, I do believe NASA are actually looking into, thankfully. Uh, not least with a recent experiment that they did to nudge a one um, uh, space rock slightly off course, which was a successful experiment if you want to, wanted to look that up or if you know about that. That was quite interesting. And that all the various myths and legends um, about these, uh, about floods across different religions, about different settlers coming to teach people different things um, maybe they're not complete fabrications given their uh, consistency across different civilizations over time that supposedly had no contact with one another and congruency with the geological and climatic record of the time and if you wanted a bit of an overview of the uh, schedule um, again, in this slide, I've used that standard um, heading and footer outline. But on, on this occasion, I've done it in a manner where you've got bullet points with two columns of information. And as I just, uh, I've, I've used this to list the uh, episode schedule um, of the eight episodes. So the titles are really intriguing and enticing, uh, very much like... Uh, Graham's books I found they, they just make you want to read more and further really engaging um, I thoroughly recommend um, the series not least for what <laughs> critical acclaim it's received as I alluded to at the start um, so that's the presentation um, that I've created a template for you obviously I've done uh, other presentation templates such as um, a funny um, presentation on a, a restaurant train called Rockfish's slogan Tomorrow's Fish uh, which is based on their slogan Tomorrow's Fish is Still in the Sea. Uh, I've done a Stranger Things template which utilizes another Netflix hit series uh, uh, to inspire the uh, design of that one um, and something about how many triangles and other stuff to help you with PowerPoint along the way. Um, so if you like my stuff, obviously I've included in this template um, uh, information about me and where you can find free information and support. So let's end presentation mode and I'll just show you a couple of things of how I've um, created some of the features in this presentation. Um, so first of all, the transitions to the different slide that fly through and you'll find that always in this uh, transitions ribbon on the first slide obviously it's not good to have a transition because uh, you want it if you just want it to be static and stay there when you go into presentation mode uh, so the transitions always start from the second uh, slide and onwards 
So I've chosen fly through uh, because I thought that was a neat uh, transition for the subject matter. Um, but you can you can flick between the different transitions of how you want your slides to appear, and you can choose different effect options. So you can fly out rather than fly in, for example. So on the right, see these effect options, and you can change the duration as well. So I've slowed it down a bit, um, but you can uh, make it faster or slower up to you. Um, these icons here is just from the insert pane. You can insert icons and simply choose from a list or search for your own icons. Um, so in this situation I searched for Comet and there's filled in ones or outline ones that you can uh, insert. So to insert icons you just select the icon and click insert. And as a default it's done it as black but you can change the fill of it, you can change the outline um, and the size as any other graphic in your presentation. So I'm just going to delete that. I did the same with the pyramid in the bottom uh, right hand corner. Um, and if you want the slide numbers, um, to insert the slide numbers, again you go to the insert tab, but this time you cho choose header and footer. And uh, under the footer you'll select this slide number and apply to all. And that will give you um, a slide number. I've already got it so uh, and I've formatted it as such um, but that will give you a little text box in which will have the slide numbers for each slide and that saves you having to do it manually. For these shapes all these are is in, uh, still under the insert you can insert different shapes um, so I quite like the rounded rectangle and then you can type in those shapes and align it according to your uh, I like to the text to be central in it and push the margins maximize the size of the text for impact um, and of course you can format uh, whatever shape you've got selected so for example I formatted this with a uh, a nice yellow fill uh, with a white outline uh, and then did the opposite for the shapes underneath I prefer this rather than inserting, you can insert what's supposed to be a saver smart art, but I never really find it a time saver because it's just such a hassle to fiddle with. So you can use these if you like or create your own shapes on this template. Uh, and uh, finally, in terms of getting columns of information in your bullet points rather than the standard as per slide two, it lists it as one column what you do is you just select the text box itself and under home there's a button there it's a really unusually small button considering how useful it is but under the paragraph section of that home uh, ribbon there's this button which is called if you hover over it add or remove columns so you can as default it's chosen as one column but you can choose that as two or three or more columns. So if I do that, uh, then it's automatically made into columns, that information for me. Always a handy button if you ever make something and it doesn't look quite right. Obviously, you've got the undo button here over on the home screen. So that's a quick uh, overview of some of the features um, that I've incorporated in this template. Again, I give some further discussion on my blog, which I'll share in um, a link below. Um, I hope you found this video helpful. I do this in my spare time um, and completely for free. So if you would like to um, donate a coffee to help keep the content flowing, by all means, visit my website and that's much appreciated. And uh, please like and share it with others. If you want to leave your comment below, let me know how you found it. Uh, so until next time, take care and goodbye.